I'm Maria Pouncey. I'm the Migrant Coordinator with PAEC, serving member and participating districts in the Panhandle of Florida. We are very fortunate to be able to administer the Title I Part C program that is federally through state funded. And we've been able to do this on behalf of our superintendents um, in order to ensure that all districts are in compliance. Title I Part C is a supplemental program and that entails us going out into the communities to locate children and families from birth to 21 who are eligible for the migrant program. Whether your district is zero funded or thousands of dollars of funded, you are still expected to operate and to identify these children coming to the area. And so that's um, really been positive for some of the districts because they are still held accountable to um, do that and when the auditors come in they are still required to show everything that it that is being done in order to comply with this mandate and so we have had districts with only one child possibly generating a hundred dollars two hundred dollars but our full services are still required we do go into the area we do serve those children and to ensure that they don't fall through the cracks and so this is certainly a benefit, especially for the small and rural districts that may not have that many migrant children coming into their area. It's not enough just to go and identify the families. We also have to serve them. If a child is ill, if a child needs clothes, well, then it's important to know what social services are available because we, we take the holistic approach. If the child is, uh, has all their basic needs met, then that child is going to be able to get into a, a school and do their very best. And that's what our ultimate goal is, is to ensure that children are given the access to and the ability to um, do the very best possible in their educational environment. We ensure that all of our parents are uh, provided the knowledge that they need to be able to get all of the services that are available. That is one of our uh, requirements by the Department of Education, but it's also just the right thing to do. If we have a child that comes in with special needs, then we work very closely with the school. We assist and ensure that the parents get into their IEP meetings. Right now we are working with a family uh, who has a very, um, I think the child suffers from seizures and um, also is uh, attending Gretchen Everhart and we're working very closely with Children's Medical Services, with her social worker, with their teachers and to try and ensure that the family has everything that they need uh, to meet the basic needs of that child and also to provide educational services for that child. Well, One of the things that we've had a lot of success with is our summer programs because we do, our main goal is that these children are able to either catch up or do as well as the children in the regular, um, during the regular school year. And so every summer we have implemented a very extensive summer program that focuses on vocabulary building. Because one thing that we found, and of course this is research based, is that many of our children, because they are second language learners, sometimes do not have the vocabulary that's needed in order to be able to do well on some of our state exams. And that has always proven well. We always so believe in early childhood education. So we have some great pre-K programs that are, one of our largest is in Escambia County, and we've got um, all of the data to say the difference that it has made in those children's lives. We understand that we might not be able to save the world, um, and I think that's the first thing that we need to realize when we get into working and you're providing a lot of social services as well as academic services. But when you see the success stories, um, for instance, we have two young men, and this was from a truly mobile family, uh, whose mother sacrificed even at the expense of some of the relatives looking down on her because she sacrificed in that she left her two boys uh, under the care of relatives so that they could continue school and not have that interruption. Both of them are now attending Our Lady of the Lake University. They are the first in a very, very large family to go to college. They're doing very well. They're both holding at least a 3.0 or higher GPA. And um, the, the fact that the mother made these sacrifices of coming back and forth from Tennessee to Quincy and then from Immokalee back to Quincy to keep up with what the young men were doing, how they were doing in, in school and really always being there for, their, for, for them just is, is very touching because she's a, a great role model for the rest of our families because it is a sacrifice. 
I think the most important thing for all of us who work in this type of social work, academic work that we do, is the fact that we don't want to ever have the child or the student think that what their father or their mother is doing is not significant. Because obviously they put the food that we eat at our hands. You know, we've got vegetables, we've got fruits that we can afford thanks to their hard work. What we want to do, though, is give them the option. If they want to go and continue that cycle, more power to them. But they're going to have something that their parents didn't have, and that's the option to go into other areas, or the options to go, say, even to be a doctor or a nurse. 